Titanic is often called the ship of dreams, and yes, many of her facilities were not yet common aboard ships at the time. First-class passengers aboard Olympic-class ships could enjoy various and interesting activities. In this video, we look at Titanic's first-class gymnasium, squash racquet court, and swimming bath. The first-class gymnasium was located on boat deck. The gymnasium was open for ladies and gentlemen free of charge between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Children could utilize the gymnasium only between the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. The two horse riding machines have been mistakenly called electric camels because of their peculiar shape. The trunk rotating machine was the real electric camel. The horse riding machines were quite popular and situated in the after port corner of the room facing one another. At night, 23 lights illuminated the room, with daylight being provided through its seven arched windows. The electrically powered machines were supplied by Rossel, Schwarz and Co. of Wiesbaden, Germany, and were powered by Allen, Sun and Co. motors. The oversized wall dial indicated the speed and distance in yards traveled for each bicycle. The bicycles were mounted side by side facing the dial, which allowed passengers to race each other. Directly abaft the No. 3 hatch, along the center line of the ship, was the main playing level of the squash racquet court. The squash racquet court was in the charge of a sports instructor who served as an attendant. Tickets for the use of the court were obtained from the inquiry office at a cost of 50 cents per half hour, which included the services of the sports instructor if required. Balls and rackets could be purchased or hired from him as well. There was an accompanying spectator's gallery on F deck overlooking the court. It could be entered only by a separate staircase starting on D deck, from where a passenger would descend the three decks past the viewing platform to descend a stairway to G deck and turn right once more before opening the door leading to the squash court. On the starboard side of the No. 5 boiler casing was the swimming bath. The swimming bath was a unique luxury and was not yet common aboard ships at the time. The swimming bath was a novelty at the time and was well patronized by the passengers. For those having purchased a ticket to the Turkish baths, there was no additional charge to use it. Designated times of use for Turkish bath patrons were 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. for ladies and 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. for gentlemen. Both could also use the swimming bath for free without a Turkish bath ticket, but only in the morning. Otherwise, there was a fee for use of the swimming bath, tickets for which were available from the inquiry office at a charge of 25 cents each. For gentlemen, it was free of charge between 6 a.m and 9 a.m. Utilizing heated salt water, it was filled from the ship's main via the hot salt water tank on the boat deck in conjunction with cold salt water led to the inlet of the pool from a separate pipe. The bath was entered by way of marble stairs fitted with teak treads. On Olympic, it was found that the bare marble stairs originally fitted were slippery when wet and caused injuries to passengers. Injuries also occurred through use of the springboards mounted on the forward and after ends. According to one account of an experience on Olympic in 1911, the water moved considerably within the bath while at sea, 
even when the ship was only pitching slightly. Because of the water sloshing from side to side and making areas of the water shallow at times, injuries occurred when passengers struck the bottom. The springboards were thus removed when heavy seas were encountered and were eventually taken away altogether, never to be fitted on Titanic.